Hey, Mr. Huck. Hi, babies. What are y'all doing? Huck and friends are down here by the road. Probably because Miss Pat was here. How much you want to bet I'm going to get me a video from sent from Mr. Dave and Miss Pat later how cute it was all the goats eating something. Some snacks. Hi, guys. How's it going? This is Mr. Huck. Hi, babies. Oh, I hear Beverly hollering. We're coming, Beverly. <laughs> it's a beautiful day, but it's warm. It's gotten hot again, y'all. Feels like summertime. We had gone through a week or so of really nice temp temps, fall like temps, not cold but definitely cool. Oh my goodness, the water's all the way off here. Y'all give me a second. I have to walk all the way around, and go inside the pasture. Good morning, sir. Hello, handsome. Hi, babies. Hey, goofball. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. And um, now we've gotten high humidity to come back into the forecast. High humidity. And it's darn, sheesh, sheesh. I bet you it's over 90 degrees out here. I bet you it's over 90 degrees out here. And so that makes it pretty uncomfortable. But you still got to do your chores. Still got to do our chores, guys. And first things first, these babies want some water. They love to cool off during this midday. Uh, I'm not letting you out right now, baby. I'm going to feed you first, let you guys cool off a little bit. And then I promise you I'll come right back after y'all cool off. Come get in some water. Look how light the feathers are on Debbie. I wonder why. She's very light right now. Of course, Tina is as fluffy and disheveled as always. And look at the baby so close to Daddy. What are the babies doing, Tat? What are you doing over here, huh? You're not supposed to be so close to Daddy. Are you? <laughs> Tat! That was his first bite at me. Look, Tat's getting his first bite of Daddy. Yay, Tat! He's going to be a biter. Oh, my goodness. I am so happy that Tat bit me. I am. That means he's no longer scared of Daddy. He's uh, getting a little bit closer, you know? And that's what we want. We want them to get a little bit closer. I'm so... That's so exciting. So, I have some exciting news that Jamie just shared with me. She's over here gardening today. It's Friday, our time. Not sure when you're going to be able to see the video, but... Tell, tell, tell me that again in slow-mo. <laughs> I have over, I have 40 tomato plants. Cherry tomato plants. 40 tomato plants. 40, guys. Now, will 40 cherry tomato plants, excuse me, baby, fit in here? Barely. They're going to be real tight. So all of these are cherry tomato plants. And will they produce before the first frost hits them? So we're hoping so. This is uh, September the 23rd. So there are different stages here. So you, so you have small, mediums, and larges. So and so way... you you actually grew these from a seed. From a seed. This is not this the, is the one, biggest one. This is not the ones you go buy as no, already no. coming out of a... I planted these from seeds. Here. I hope that Jamie can get that garden going before the first frost. I, uh, we uh, have been blessed. And there have been years we haven't gotten our first frost until mid to late November. But there's also been years where we get a frost in early October. So it's already the end of September. Well, middle of September. 23rd, I think today is. Come on, guys. We're going to feed you. I need to put my phone down for a second. I can't pour up high, but I'll video some more once I drop the feet off. It's so hard to believe that the babies are already eating off the top. They're eating out of the top. Look, this one here is reaching his head. This tat is reaching his head all the way over. 
Tat, come back. I'm not going to mess with you. He's reaching his head all the way over and eating on the other side of the fence. And that's awesome. I try to divide the containers up, some on each side, so that the babies get some, the adults get some. There we go. There we go. What's wrong, Carl? All right, today is Friday. It is September the 23rd, and we're gonna do ourselves an experiment. We're gonna have a seven day experiment to find out if you guys think that Jolene and Santoro are ready to be weaned off of mamas, off their mamas, off their mothers. And I want y'all to see exactly what I see, especially when it comes to feeding time. So I'm gonna get the feed loaded up and we're gonna head over and you all watch what I see and let's talk about it. All right, so Santoro comes out to meet me at the gate. What does that tell you? That he knows exactly what's happening. I hope that you saw right there what I just saw. Let's keep an eye on these calves more than anything else. We're watching these calves. Note that I have a lot more food troughs than I have cows. There's a lot more feed troughs out here than I have cows. So let me start pouring before they get over here so I can show y'all the full effect of what happens here as they start finding their feed bowls. Feed bowls or food bowls. Watch your horns, left. All right, so I've got two poured and it goes in order, guys. They have a hierarchy of who's who and what's what. Okay, watch this. Look, y'all watch, y'all watch. That's the first one. Here we go, watch this. Y'all watch. Y'all keep, <laughs> okay. So here's what I would say about that. Mama still cares enough about her daughter that she didn't want to leave her without food. So what she does is, mom will go find her another trough to run that one right there out, Rick Gracie. Uh, Santiana won't let Rip have anything. Now these two are still eating together. But if anything, notice that baby is eating the grain, not eating from mama's teat. Look over there. Santana won't let Rip have anything. She's run him completely off. He's waiting for me to pour more food. And now looky here. Same thing. Pearl just left Jolene. Jolene and Santoro, or we call them Rip, they uh, will end up eating together, but they want nothing to do with mom, and mom wants nothing to do with either one of them. And then I look at the health of mama. So looky here. We have quite a few ribs showing, and then we have that back, that tailbone right there. We don't like that if we can help it. Look at her spine. We need to get mama fat and healthy again, and mama knows that she can't do that on the little bit of sparse grass that we have here, along with this having to feed this baby. We're gonna see the same thing happen again. So I should probably not even talk because I don't want to sway your opinion. I just want you to come up with an opinion on your own. And that's what we need to listen to, what you guys can come up with, not what Lester can tell you, just what you observe on your own. Gracie's looking good. Tex is looking great. And even uh, Santana's looking good. But don't forget, she's been pushing Rip off at her more than anyone else. And look how healthy he looks. He looks great. Wait, I was gonna stop talking, wasn't I? Here, I got a little bit more here. I was gonna stop talking and let y'all make up your own decisions. <laughs> let y'all make up your, okay, here we go again. Here we go, y'all watch. I'm gonna set my bucket down. I'm gonna have a front row seat for all this. Huh? She wants it for herself. She needs it for herself. I can't stop talking.
This is alfalfa. It's alfalfa hay. I'm only going to give them a flake each. That's empty, baby. That's empty, love. Still feed in the bottom of all these troughs here. Now, of course, they're going to choose the grains over this alfalfa, but they'll choose the alfalfa over the regular hay, which is kind of funny. And then they'll choose grass over regular hay as well. So the order pretty much goes grains, alfalfa, grass from the pasture, and then hay. All right, so now everybody has their very own flake of alfalfa. They have to go around and find it. I'll put one far over here. So everyone has a way to get to their hay when they're ready for it. No one has to fight and argue. I'll throw out one more. In case they start pushing and shoving, they'll all have somewhere to go. Uh, so actually, I'm gonna have two extra flakes laying around. There we go. It feels so strange watching the little goats eat because there's so few of them. I was used to having this entire little spot here full of goats and now there's only eight of them and they look so tiny. They do, they look so tiny. But uh, they, don't, they all look healthy, y'all. They all look really good. And I think that you would agree with me. The only one that we worry about all the time, and we've worried about him for a long time, would be Mr. Huck. But there's not a lot you can do with Mr. Huck. But he, hey, he's a get-up-and-go-getter. A get-up-and-go-getter. And if you notice, his belly is actually fat. His belly has some... You know, it's just little, he just can't gain weight. Stop all that nonsense, sillies. There's plenty. So you don't have to put out a flake for each goat. You can actually put about one flake per three goats. <laughs> but they're going to make Sissy fight for it. Sissy's going to have to fight for every bite. Poor baby. Y'all look at Roxy. Let me show y'all something that's pretty interesting. I'm gonna walk in there and show y'all something. Uh, I wanna go look at Roxy because she has some big old swollen teats. How? I know. Come on over, come on. How? That's not even possible. Well, it is possible because you can't hide them. But I mean, it's not possible to have, oh my. It's possible, but what I'm saying, is... oh man, does she have some mess? Baby. Get her close, get her real close. <laughs> <laughs> Get on, little girl. Hold on, don't move your hand. Leave your hand right there. <laughs> yeah. My hand is disgustingly dirty from washing the Don't let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that.